Hey Yardy friends, today we are taking a look at the Boko Undo Japanesque color. These are Gansai watercolors that are inspired by a traditional Japanese Sumie painting and you guys have probably already seen the unbox and swatch for this. So I have here a cute illustration of Kara carrying a candle and I thought it would be cool to do this illustration in monochrome so I'm going to select one of these beautiful colors and use that to paint the entirety of this piece. So I think I want to use purplish black for this and I'm just going to go ahead and remove it and that way I can kind of better keep track of it and not get confused. So I've grabbed purplish black and we have our nice large Gensai style watercolor pot and this is sized to accommodate Sumie brushes. And I've got my illustration already sketched out and I've also got a clean cup of water and a daisy palette. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to, and I'm probably going to spill because this is really hard to do. No, I'm going to pour some of the water out so that I can go ahead and create a wash with the purplish black. I'll put some of the excess in there. And the first thing I'm going to do after that, now I need to be careful because the, um, the pink I've used to sketch it in has a tendency of lifting as you add water, but I'm going to want to apply a wash. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to accommodate the glow of the candle. And I'm also going to need to go grab some paper towels because I'm going to need to do some lifting. So I've added water to the area that will hopefully be my glow if all things go well. And now I'm going to add our purplish black, which is more of a grape color right now. I'm going to add purplish black to our paper surface. All right, so we have almost our full wash applied. I'm gonna go in again and soften some of the blends, or at least attempt to. I'm going to also go in here and then I'm going to lift all the pooling so it doesn't get on another piece of paper. You guys can see the paper is buckling pretty extreme. We're also getting a little bit of color separation, which is interesting. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use a bit of the paper towel and kind of lift it up. and let that dry. And then after this is fully dried, I'm gonna use a clip to secure it down. All 
right, so this is still damp, but it is dry enough that I can use a bulldog clamp and try to do it not in the paint. Use a bulldog clamp to help secure it. And I've got kind of a, a messy wash going. So let's see if I can't tighten things up a little bit and clean things up a little bit. Now, watercolor tends to dry lighter than it goes down. So this is gonna dry to about this color. It's a little bit scary though, because it seems so dark. But we also have to keep in mind that we can develop other colors to be even darker, and that's gonna provide contrast, and that's gonna make these colors seem lighter than they actually are. So don't be afraid to use contrast and darker colors in your paintings, even for something monochromatic like this. And we do need to get those darker colors. We do need to get that contrast because she's in the dark lit only by a candle. So we're going to have to build our colors up and develop that. And another thing is it's okay if this doesn't turn out just right. It's an experiment. We're playing around with it. And it's an opportunity to learn how to do something new or to practice a skill set we might not use as often. And the only way you can get better at painting is by putting paint on paper. Something that's nice about painting in monochrome is these sort of paintings tend to go really quickly. So if you're looking for kind of an afternoon painting project or maybe something for younger artists, this can be a really good way to achieve that on a limited budget and with limited materials. And our goal is to get a full painting done with only one color of paint. So that has had a chance to dry. The next thing I want to do is I want to build up contrast in the background and that's for a couple of reasons. One, if I do that now, it's going to be easier for me than doing it later. And two, it's going to help me better determine the contrast I use on Kara.
All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this beautiful, beautiful color in the background. And put down a little bit of water and that way we can get a nice glow and then I'm gonna work kind of tight around it now I'm painting on inexpensive cellulose base paper in my Canton Biggie XL sketchbook so this might not behave quite the way I want it to so I just have to be patient with it and patient with myself I think that's something we as artists need to practice. And you guys can probably see that by building up this lovely rich color, it gives us a better basis for how we're going to handle our color later on in this piece. Now, unfortunately, I wish it would dry this beautiful and dark and rich, but it's not going to. It's going to dry a little bit lighter. All right, so now I need to let this dry, but adding that contrast has really made me feel a lot better about where I went with her skin tone because it's given me um, some perspective as to you know how light that actually is and how dark the background went. So I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, so this has had lots of time to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing up a darker color. I think it would be helpful for me if I went ahead and I mixed up 
the mid-tone that I want and painted that. And then I could work on developing all the shading in between. So I want to leave room for the highlight since she's being lit by this candle. And while, yeah, we can go back with the white gouache or whatever you're using to do white highlights or white additions, um, you should probably try to leave the white of the paper or the lighter tones of the paper as much as possible. It just feels more coherent when you do it that way. I'm also leaving a little bit of a white halo because it helps differentiate her from the background. When I'm recording like this, I can't necessarily stop what I'm doing to answer or even pause the recording because when you're working with watercolor, it can be hard to just put things down like that. You want to try and finish what you're doing. Like even if you're just filling in an area, you want to try and finish what you're doing and then go do that other thing you need to do. So anyway, I'm going to come back in after this is dried and kind of do some of the values that are in between our mid-tone here, which is actually kind of a dark mid-tone. So what I may do is I may do another layer on the background as well to get it really, really dark. But this is a beautiful color and you can see hints of, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't necessarily use this as a mixing color, but it's beautiful as a standalone kind of ink wash color because, you know, there's, as I'm looking at it, where it's said, where there's been some sedimentation, you can see some dark blues, you can see some grays. So there's a lot of colors within this color and it's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to let this mid-tone dry, and I think once that's dried, I'm going to go in and make the background even darker. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repaint the background again, and I want a brush that's a little bit sturdier then the Sumi brush and the squirrel brush I was using. So I'm gonna fill this with water. And it's synthetic like this is really good for mixing paint. Um, the surface texture of your pan, like um, I've had problems with Windsor and Newton half pans, for example, kind of destroying my brushes, but it's not going to destroy a synthetic. And I want something that's larger but can carry a point.
Now the problem with these really soft squirrel hair brushes is that they can be just a little bit too floppy and sometimes they can be kind of difficult to control. So if you have control issues, if you struggle with getting the kind of brush marks you want, then squirrel hair brushes might not be the best pick for you just because they really require a lot of control. So really, monochrome painting can be really good if you are someone who struggles with building up enough contrast in your watercolor because monochrome painting is basically all a study in values. It can also be really good if you have a very limited selection of paint or if you're not really 100% confident in your color theory or your color mixing, this can be a good way to do attractive paintings and build up your confidence while working with limited supplies. And one of the best tips I ever got was a friend pointed out to me that when you're doing ink wash, you don't have to even use ink. You could use black watercolor. So, that, because for some of us, black watercolor is a lot easier to control. It's easier to mix than, say, Sumi ink. So it seems like we have established our darkest value, our mid-tone value, and our lightest value. I'm going to clean this area up right there where it kind of seeped in and give this a chance to dry. And then we'll work on developing our mid-tone and our lightest values. So something that's really cool about this watercolor is check out how it separates out. Isn't that really pretty? That's just one color and you can get kind of some depth of tone there. So I need to give this a chance to dry because as you guys can see, it's still wet. But then I'm going to work on developing our mid-tones and our lightest tones a little bit more. Okay, so this is still drying, but I'm going to try to work kind of around it and accommodate the wet areas. Just look in for my better brush. It also helps when you're doing these sort of monochromatic pieces, it helps to have a scrap piece of paper that you can use to kind of test colors out on, see how things look, so you don't go too dark or too light. Now I have to be really careful with this because there is a lot of wet areas. So I'm sort of starting by working with my lighter colors. Also want to make sure I get these tassels as well because another thing 
about painting this way or doing monochrome stuff is that you're building up your colors. So you may want to, even though it's not going to be the in color, you may want to go ahead and put a layer down just as sort of a placeholder. Of course, having the paper wet like this does make it a little more challenging. So I'm going to try to just kind of get in and get out, get done what I need to do, and then come back to it in a couple of minutes. And since I'm doing something that involves so strongly lighting effects, since it's in monochrome, that's really the big focus, I need to think really carefully about what the light is hitting and, you know, build up form. and kind of build things up in stages. And I do actually want to add just a little bit of color to the flame. And sort of blend it out a little bit with water. So I'm gonna let this layer dry. Alright, so that layer has dried, not fully, but a bit, at least enough that we can continue working. So you can either mix the color a little bit darker or use the same color. It kind of just depends on what you're going for, especially if you're doing like the same, if you're building up like your lighter tones. Now the pink, oh, I got my hands in it. We knew that was coming. The pink lead was probably not the best choice just because it's standing out a little bit more than I would have liked. Usually when I do watercolor, it kind of dissolves into the skin tones. But with this, it's kind of standing out. That's okay. This is a sketch. We're working in a sketchbook. We're learning, we're making things, we're trying things out, so I'm not concerned about it, but I know I'm a big advocate for using the colored leads with watercolor. This is one of those instances where maybe we should not have. gonna add a little bit of color there and on the wick blend that out a little bit I'm going to go in with some clean water and blend some of these out just a little bit just to, well, I thought it would look good. Here, glad 
just a little bit there and kind of blend it out a little bit. I'm not trying to lose my mid-tone contrast color and I will be building that up as well. In fact, I'm probably going to stop here with developing and painting the lightest shade let that dry and then go in and start developing and painting the mid-tone shade a bit more. All right, so our lighter tones have mostly dried. I am gonna go in now and do some of the darker tones or rather the mid-tones here. I'm not gonna get everything though. I'm not gonna get the hair, for example, at least not right now. So I'm mostly just focusing on this area here since there's still a lot of wet on here. So right now we need to think about what would be casting shadow, what would be in shadow, what isn't receiving a lot of light. And that would be the area that's blocked by the candle. And I use a little bit of water because I really love how the colors in this separate out. And I'm gonna try to use a combination of solid and kind of blended outlines for this. And when I'm painting something that's as dark as this, I try to leave um, sort of like a halo or rim lighting just so that it doesn't get completely lost in the dark. And then I'm going to blend this out at the top as well. And while I'm here, I might as well get started on her eyes. So I'm gonna leave a little rim of the lighter blue. And I'll go ahead and do the eyebrows. Also going to do a little bit of work on the tassels. Now, rather than inking this with a brush pen, I'm kind of thinking about inking this using this watercolor. Now, the problem with that is that with the way I'm painting right now, I am hunched over, I'm basically doing everything you don't want to do, both for painting and for watercolor. I'm hunched over, um, I'm not supporting my arm properly, I'm not really getting a good angle. So if I were to ink this like that, I would probably pause the recording and do that and then check in with you guys after I'd finished, just because I would get better results that way. But I really love um, some of the beautiful color separation and how this paint handles in kind of an unusual, at least unusual to me way. Get up in there and do a more direct cast shadow in there as well. And then Kind of redefine that. But painting in monotone or monochrome can be really fun because it gives you an opportunity to kind of re explore things that maybe go neglected to kind of revisit things that you don't practice as much because you're not concentrating so much on the colors anymore you're just thinking about working with contrast and working with light and shadow
right, so the area around her hair is dry enough that I can go in and kind of work on shading her hair a little bit. Now, since this isn't a true black, we don't actually reach the darkest blacks, um, but it does have this nice kind of grape color. So I'm gonna try and be careful, but I'm not gonna stress out about it if I'm not careful enough, because really this is just a sketch and exploration. Trying to leave that rim lighting we talked about. And if you're in a better painting situation than I am, I really recommend you allow your brush to do most of the work rather than relying on your wrist. You're going to get much nicer looking lines if you let your brush do the work. And I'm looking for kind of lost and found hard edges. So some of them I kind of blended out. Some of them I kind of left as is. But I'm kind of nearing the finish line, at least with what I'm going to show you guys, what I'm going to demonstrate for you guys on camera. Oh, that's going to be too dark. Water that down a bit because I do want the contrast. I just don't want it that dark. Now I'm going to take a piece, although it is kind of lightening up on its own. All right, my camera cut off while I was working on this. I'm not sure at one what point, but I darkened. So I've worked on tightening some areas up. I have lost some of my contrast and I think I'm going to show you guys how I plan on fixing that. Okay, so I'm going to take a clean brush full of water and I'm going to work around this because that area is still wet. And I'm just going to reactivate this. Already it's starting to pull away a little bit. I'm going to take a paper towel, press it into the area. All right, it looks like it lifted a lot. That's okay. I'm gonna work that back down in. All right, yeah. I think that'll help, because I didn't want to lose my mid-tone entirely. But I did want to help push the contrast a bit. And I'm actually gonna do the same over here in her hair. What's both good and bad about these Boku Undo Gansai Tanbe watercolors is they are kind of prone to lifting, which makes them very reworkable. Re but if you were using them for layering stuff and you wanted to put stuff on top of them, that could be a problem because they seem like they're prone to lifting. Then I'm going to a little off the top there just to add a little bit of highlight drag that up a bit go ahead and do her freckles
and give that a chance to dry as well. All right, so I'm at the point where I want to start kind of tightening this piece up and basically inking it using the watercolor. I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean by that and then I'm gonna do the rest off camera because my work angle is kind of abysmal and it would be a lot easier for me and I could produce a much better piece if I wasn't reliant on this particular angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a really concentrated amount of watercolor. Not so thick that it doesn't wanna go down, but not so thin that you can't tell the difference between the areas I've quote unquote inked and the rest of the piece. So I'm gonna select an area that's gonna be kinda easy for me. So we're gonna do her arm right there and I'll zoom in for you guys. So inking with watercolor is really just a lot like regular inking. I might tighten up some details. I might um, fix a few things here and there, but really all I'm doing is I'm just kind of going over my lines. the same way I would in ink, kind of reinforcing them so that the pink isn't so apparent. It takes a little bit of practice to get good enough and to get confident with this but I mean it's not really any different than inking with any other utensil we're just inking with a brush using our watercolor all right so I finished inking it it's still drawing in some places um or I mostly finished inking it you guys know how that is whenever you think you're done with something you always see something else that needs to be adjusted. Now some areas do still need to dry and this is a sketch so I'm not really going to try to get too tight with things or too, too finished with things, too detailed with things. That's not really the intention. I say as I clean things up but I do want to use just a little bit of white gouache and I'll mix it over here in one of the half pans or one of the wells, sorry. And I'm just going to use this to carefully add some highlights back in.
right, so I think for this little sketch, we are just about done. I hope this video inspired you guys to try doing monochrome watercolor to give it a shot. It's very easy, can produce really nice results, fairly inexpensive, and it requires so few materials. I'm sure you've already got what you need right on hand. Another plus side is you don't actually have to use expensive watercolors to do monochrome watercolors. You can use really cheap stuff. Just find a color in your cheap pan that works. Um, I would recommend not using Crayola necessarily though, just because it doesn't layer very well. But otherwise, very affordable, fairly easy to do, and it just requires some patience. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and helping me paint. Today I was using the Boku Undo Purple Black paint. This is a Sumie-esque palette. So it's inspired by traditional Japanese colors. And I've ordered this off of Amazon. So if you're interested in this color, I'll have a link in the description below to the whole palette. They're fairly affordable and you get a lot of paint out of it. And they're all nice, beautiful, darker colors. I hope you guys will keep on watching this channel for more watercolor tips, tricks, and tutorials, as well as other types of art tutorials. I update multiple days a week, but I always update on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. If you're looking for more watercolor instruction, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys!